Joining us is Jenna Ellis, Director of Public Policy for the James Dobson Family Institute and Richard Roth, founder of the Roth Law Firm. Good to have you in studio with us. Uh, Richard, it does seem as though Republicans have offered three compromises now. As we said, Mulvaney said that there was an offer. Then the president came out with his proposal uh, on Saturday regarding DACA. And now this compromise to get a down payment, which I'm sure many Republicans aren't very happy about. And yet we understand that point blank Nancy Pelosi, Schumer is talking, but Nancy Pelosi is saying, no, nothing to talk about until the government opens. Do you advise her to take a different approach at this point? So here's the thing. First of all, the three offers have been 5.7 billion, 5.7 billion, 5.7 billion. So they no, really not this been, time. They have, well, a down payment. We're talking about Donald Trump. What does that mean? Donald Trump will say things and not know what he means and then sort of figure out what he meant. So if we know what a down payment is, then maybe we can respond. But what the Congress has to do, essentially, is move Donald Trump aside, let them do their legislative duty, let them sit and talk. And as far as Nancy Pelosi yeah, goes, isn't, isn't Pelosi the, the Nancy obstacle. Pelosi yeah, is at not least right. on the Democrats end. I the, hear your points about yeah, the president potentially, but can the Democrats go anywhere with Pelosi being so, well, obstinate? So here's the deal. Nancy Pelosi right now is not even in the game. It's Chuck Schumer and it's McConnell. That's what's going on. It's, it's two Senate votes. It wasn't a House vote. If Chuck Schumer and Mitch McConnell can, can get it together, Nancy Pelosi will go along. And let's not forget that of the two votes that were cast today, the, one, the Democratic vote in a Republican Senate got more votes. Why? Because they want to open up the government. They, Their priority is get them to work. Forget your 5.7 billion. There, there billion was hurricane wall. funding in that. And yes, I mean, Republicans don't think that this shutdown is a good look for them either. So I can it's understand terrible. why some of them moved. But, but Jen, I want to bring you in. This recent, uh, what appears to be uh, a concession from the White House, will get a down payment on the wall. We'll reopen the government uh, from, for, for at least three weeks and, and see what happens. Is that good enough for the Republican base? Is, is the president backing down here? Well, I think that the question should be what's good enough for the American people, what's good enough uh, for the interests of what Congress and our federal government is actually designed to do, which is to preserve and protect the fundamental pre-political unalienable rights of all Americans. That includes border security. That includes the ability for American families to feel safe in their homes, for a young girl in California to be able to walk on a pier and not get shot, for uh, Ronell Singh, who uh, served this nation honorably, to not have to fear not coming home to his family. For, for all of these things, we have to remember that the federal government is not designed to preserve and protect their power or their policy interests, but to protect us, the American people. And so what needs to happen, and I actually agree with my good friend, Rich, that they need to sit down and actually have a good faith discussion about border security and do their legislative job. All right, All right. and we will continue our discussion about what that discussion on compromise could involve with Two reasonable people. Right after the break, so stick around. We'll pick that conversation up. We are back with our panel, Jenna Ellis, Director of Public Policy for the James Dobson Family Institute, and Richard Roth, founder of the Roth Law Firm. Guys, before the break, it looked like we, we could be making some headway towards a, a compromise. Uh, Richard, Democrats, particularly Pelosi, have called the wall immoral. Have they backed themselves into a corner? I mean, the Republicans are going to want a barrier. Call it a wall, call it steel slats. They are going to want some kind of physical barrier there. Can Democrats give them that after calling it immoral? Yeah, you're right. I think, I think Pelosi has gone too far, if you will, to the left. The problem is that the problem is the problem stems from Donald Trump. Donald Trump said 5.7 billion or I'm shutting down Congress. I'm, I'm not blaming. I'm not shutting down the, the, the government. I'm not blaming you. I'm taking responsibility. So now what does Donald Trump do? Donald Trump is the one that backed himself into a wall. Now he's saying maybe a down payment. Why? Because his ratings are gone down. He's being blamed on this government shutdown. So, yes, I agree with you. Pelosi is should has to move a little bit to the right. But. Donald Trump has to take responsibility for this, and he is, and that's why he's saying, well, maybe down payment. He's trying to get himself out of the corner he's in because he knows that the, that the country is, at least the overwhelming majority, are blaming him. This is, this is the government not working. The Congress should make its own, should, should, as, as, as my friend Janice said, Congress should, should vote, and then the president can veto it or not veto it. And what's happening here is Congress is not voting because they're afraid of the president veto. That's not, that's not the constitutional um, process he's working as they should be. Uh, Jenna, what kind of compromise can the president accept in terms of a physical barrier that he has promised that he has campaigned on? 
Yeah, and I think that, as, as Richard just said, I think that this is really Congress's obligation because if you look at the vested powers of Article One in the Constitution, the entire uh, subject matter of immigration as a whole, border security, military funding, all of that is given to Congress. And so if Congress would do their job and if they would actually come together in good faith, sit down like two reasonable people as we are doing here tonight, the three of us, and actually talk about what defines border security and bring something that is not political partisan interests, not politics and party, but come to President Trump and say, this is our compromise, we all back and support this, then I think that that could be something that he would be very interested in and would be a win-win for everyone. The issue here is that no one in the federal government is actually doing their job in right. Congress. They are looking at politics and partisan interest over their constitutional obligations to us, the American people. Well, Richard, we saw a dismal failure from Congress uh, when Republicans put forward two bills to at least pay these 800000 and federal government workers now, not later, not back pay, but pay for it now. And uh, the majority of Democrats did not support that. That's because that I mean, is that's combined an issue with that a five point seven billion was, dollar wall. That was no, that was just to pay the federal government workers. Just pay them. I, I agree. There should be a there should be legislation, and and we can blame both parties. There should be legislation to essentially pay the government workers, let them get back. The problem well, there is, was that. The, the, pro, well, there the was reason that why it's not happening is because we are unfortunately we are faced with a 2020 election around the corner, and this is all about 2020. And so the Republicans don't want to really. They want to keep their base. They don't want to lose their Trump supporters. Well, so they're saying, we're going to do what Donald Trump wants. Who, who And he's just... But throw, why wouldn't Democrats just get the money to the federal government employees that, that, they've so, that they are concerned about, rightfully so? They had an opportunity uh, twice to vote to allow them to get paid now. Well, I don't know if that's why? fair. I don't know if that's fair because the, the Democratic, the Democratic um, vote, which was rejected was to allow the government workers to go back to work. So I think I could th you could throw it either way. I mean, the bottom line is that there were 50, there wasn't even a majority of votes in favor of, of, of the Republican. Remember, Republicans had 50 votes. The Democrat and their on their 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 um, proposal. The Democrats had fifty two. So neither of them are getting anywhere. I don't know if you can just blame but the Democrats. But why? Because we're characterizing this as Republican right. versus Democrat. Exactly. That's the entire problem. We need to look so at. So what is a face saving compromise? Because this is about politics. Donald Trump. This is about twenty twenty. <laughs> no, I think this is, about, this is about political <laughs> posturing. Just, what is a face saving compromise, Jenna? That the Republicans still walk away with grace and that the Democrats do, and more importantly, the government functions again, is open again, and it serves the American people. I think the conservative position is that we remember that border security means that Congress does its job. And I think that when Mitch McConnell and Senator Schumer sit down, they should be able to lead both of the parties into something that is totally bipartisan, that is genuinely what would that look conservative. Like? I'll tell you what what would that like? look like? It'll look like a $2.3 billion for the wall. Trump wants 5.7. The Democrats have already agreed to 1.3, 1.6. Make it 2.3. Pick a number in the, early, in the low twos. 2.35 billion. But the point is, what's 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 upsetting is that there's 800,000 people who are not working because of this, for lack of a better word, pettiness. Come up with a number, agree on it, and then get them back to work, and then you can decide whether you want to fund more. But don't use these these. But, these but the individuals. issue with that is that there has to be some trust between right. both sides, and that's what isn't going on. Big here. problem. It's that's right. the biggest problem in negotiations. If you and I are sitting down on opposite sides of the table negotiating um, agreements for clients, and we're both lawyers, we understand this. You have to have trust in your counsel, and and okay. counsel has to trust each other. All right, Jenna, Richard, Michelle, thank you. Thank you guys. Thank you, Appreciate it. All right.